What's up, makers? This time I'm industrial maker. I'm collaborating with Johnny from Johnny Builds, and he came here from Oklahoma City, and he brought me this amazing six-year-old reclaimed beam, and we've turned that into this huge freestanding floor lamp. We also made a bar cart from concrete and steel, which is really cool, and you should definitely check that out on his channel when you're done with this one. But for now, let's get going and make this lamp. Let's go. Vintage Reclaimed Lumber from Oklahoma City sent this six-year-old reclaimed bean up with Johnny and we decided it would be fun to do a lighting project to match the interior of my loft which is an old brick and timber building and we ended up arriving at this leaning floor lamp design which could be assembled without any welding. We picked up a 20 foot by 10 inch sheet of quarter inch steel from a local Chicago steel yard, had them cut it to manageable sizes, and then got to work cutting down the back legs for the lamp. We used scrap plywood as a guide to start the 30 degree cuts with our angle grinders, and then removed the plywood once we had a nice groove to finish off the cut. Since the beam was 8 inches wide, we decided to go ahead and cut the back legs down to 8 inches as well so they match the width of the beam. We then took the rear legs over to the drill press so that we could drill the holes to attach the legs to the beam and to the wooden feet that I was going to make later. Since we were drilling into steel, we made sure to use plenty of oil and started with smaller drill bits and worked our way up to the drill bits for the one quarter inch lag screws that would attach the legs to the beam. Next, Johnny used an angle grinder with a flap disc to remove any burrs and rough edges before we screwed the rear legs to the beam. You'll notice we haven't yet cut the front legs for the lamp. We waited because we wanted to attach the rear legs and hold up the lamp so that we could visually try out different arrangements of the front leg before cutting the steel to size. We ended up cutting the base of each front leg at 20 degrees and the top side of each front leg at 10 degrees rotating the opposite direction from the 20 degree base angle. Before going further on the lamp assembly, it was time to create the cutout for the LED strips, which would also have a rabbit to receive a matching acrylic piece that would serve as a diffuser. For the cutout and acrylic diffuser, I got to use my new toy, a Shaper Origin router. Now this is a computer vision assisted router. I've heard it called a CNC, but it's not really that. It's really an entirely new kind of tool that uses computer vision to keep your cuts with the router straight and on a path. After laying down some special tape with a domino-like pattern on it that allows the Shaper Origin to see the workpiece, you do a quick scan of the workpiece and then use the touch screen to actually drop your cut pattern, which in this case was basically a rectangle, right onto the workpiece. And then it's kind of like a video game, just cutting it out by following the path on the touch screen of the Origin. I should mention that you could also cut the acrylic and create the cutout in the beam with standard woodworking tools like a router and a circular saw. So you don't really need the origin, but using the origin did make it easier for us to get an exact pressure fit because we just used the same pattern on the beam and offset it by a hundredth of an inch so the acrylic would pressure fit nicely into the rabbit in the beam. So we've got the cutout perfectly shaped now to accept our acrylic panel. We shaped the edges of the cutout 
with the shape or origin so we could get it perfect and then transfer that exact same shape and cut out the acrylic so we get a really nice snug pressure fit. I also went back off camera, got out my trusty big old router and hogged out the entire middle section that the LEDs are going to sit in. So now that we've got all this prepped, um, let's get going and assemble this ginormous lamp. I think it's gonna be fun. While Johnny went to work on his bar cart, I went about making the wooden feet, which are a pretty cool story in improvisational design. Rewind back to the steel yard, and we still didn't know how we were gonna provide lateral support for the steel legs without welding. As we were loading the steel into Johnny's truck, I saw some old beat up 4x4 lumber lying in the steel yard's junk pile. I thought, why don't we just chop it up on the miter saw and glue it together to make a couple feet for the lamp, and it'll really match the beam well. After gluing up three pieces of the 4x4 lumber to make each foot, I used quarter inch lag screws to attach each foot to the steel legs. Now I can hear it already in the comments, I know it, I'm screwing into the ingrain, but decided to take that risk and it worked out okay. If you do this yourself, you know, it is a risk, but you know, you can always try and see, it worked out okay for us. The last thing to do before the final assembly was cut a quarter inch threaded rod that would span between the two legs and provide some additional lateral stability. To cut the rod, Johnny used an angle grinder with a metal cutoff wheel. After you cut threaded rod, it can sometimes be difficult to get a new nut onto the recently cut in. But Johnny showed me this really cool little trick just using the same cutoff wheel to round over the end where you cut and then you can slip the nut right on. After that, we are ready to haul this beast up to my loft for the final assembly and adding LEDs. I used an auger bit to drill the hole through the whole beam for the wires to run to the back. Then run the power, ground, and control wires from the SK6812 LED strips through the back and hook them up to the off-the-shelf SP106E LED controller. And this is a really cool controller. It lets you do normal colored modes, so you could go various shades of white with these. And it also has a really fun music syncing mode, as you guys saw in the beginning of the video. So I'll be a link below for that. It's a pretty cool off the shelf controller. Maybe I'll go back and add an Arduino later to do some even cooler stuff because this is really just a big LED matrix in the lamp. So if you wanna see that, leave a comment, let me know. Maybe I'll revisit that at some point down the road. Back to the build, the only thing left to do to complete the lamp was to attach the front legs with some steel lag screws. All right guys, so after this build, there's really only one thing to say, and that is, I love lamp. I love lamp. <laughs> All seriousness, this collaboration was tons of fun. So if you want to see more awesome designs, definitely head over to Johnny Build's channel. Yeah. Definitely check out the concrete bar cart that he and I made uh, that's on his channel. And you definitely want to subscribe because yeah. I think you've got more cool stuff in store, right? I do, man. Yeah. All right. Awesome. As always, if you like my channel, click the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you get notified about future builds. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.